One of the ways Russia achieves national goals is by creating falsifications and conspiracy theories. When Russia wants to, it can create high-quality fakes and sophisticated deceptions with brilliant intricacy. But when something goes wrong in Russia's wars abroad, there's no time. Quick and dirty conspiracy theories and disinformation slow down analysis and distract people in the early stages of a news story. Just recently, Russia used this tactic to hide its bombing of a UN humanitarian aid convoy delivering food and medicine to Syria. First, Russia's Ministry of Defense claimed that a mortar was moving with the convoy, suggesting either the convoy was protecting a terrorist truck or the terrorists had attacked the convoy and that the convoy wasn't destroyed by an airstrike at all. But it was obvious from the photos that only an airstrike could leave those kinds of holes in the destroyed vehicles. Then Russian propaganda suggested a US drone was responsible for the bombing, which was the total opposite of the previous version, but it does dovetail with recent fears of US overreach with drone warfare. But photos from the site showed the tails of Russian bombs sticking out of the wreckage. Russia's domestic media immediately created more theories, first saying it was Assad, then that it wasn't, that it was a U.S. plot, that it was the Syrian rebels. Then alternative outlets picked up the story from there, even said that it was the White Helmets, the rescuers. Do you feel your head swirling already? That's exactly the point. You are witnessing the birth of conspiracy theories. Since they're being made up on the run, they contradict each other, creating chaos and confusion. Amateurs will take them up, weave them together, and produce new material that Russian propaganda can use later. In the meantime, specialists in Moscow are probably already working on the official deceptive story that will be much more airtight. We've seen this before. Civilian airliner MH17 was shot down by a Russian book, operated by Russian servicemen invading Ukraine, who were aiming for a Ukrainian military plane. But to obscure those facts, Russia produced multiple conspiracies. Days after the crash, Russia's Ministry of Defense planted two theories that would later be regurgitated many times over, that it was a Ukrainian plane or a Ukrainian book that shot down MH17. For this, it produced fake satellite images of a book and fake radar data purporting to show a plane nearby. Someone in Moscow even edited Wikipedia to make you think SU-25s fly at the same altitude as MH17, which they don't, and to make you think that Russia doesn't use that type of missile anymore. Too bad Putin took a photo right next to one. And other theories flooded the landscape. Do they actually work? Let's listen to Liz Wall, former anchor at RT. Part of the strategy is to plant seeds of doubt to the official story and question everything so facts can't be established. So no one really knows what's fact and what's fiction. What ends up happening is that the truth becomes one of many possible competing theories, just one of several alternative realities. It messes with people's minds and that's what it's designed to do. The joint investigation team confirmed conclusively that MH17 was shot down by a Russian book, but Russia is still sowing a seed of doubt. Rapid fire conspiracy theories distract people at the early stages of the story, concealing the most obvious and damning version of events. Luckily, these conspiracies are produced so fast, there's no time for a credible theory. And with the help of investigative journalists, the truth will come out.